Monica Reese is our presenter today. Monica is a quality consultant at Registry Partners. Monica serves as a data abstraction subject matter expert. She ensures data accuracy through quality control oversight and providing ongoing education to her team. Monica is also a mentor. She provides mentoring to our clients, employees who are seeking their CTR certification. So thank you, Monica, for your willingness to speak with us today. And we are gonna pass the controls over to you. Hello, we are going to talk about colon EOD and SSDI, microsatellite instability. Okay, extensive disease or EOD is not new to the cancer registry world. EOD was first published in 1976 as part of the SEER code manual. Throughout the years, it went through several revisions which included different lengths of digits for code schemas. 2018 brought the most recent version implemented for SEER registries. EOD 2008 includes three main data fields, EOD primary tumor, EOD regional nodes, and EOD meth. Let's take a look at EOD primary tumor for colon schema. Here are the notes given to go along with the codes. Codes for site-specific schema take precedence over general guidelines for EOD primary tumor. Note one, code 000, behavior code two, includes cancer cells confined within the glandular basement membrane or described as in situ. Note two, code 050, behavior code three, if intramucosal, lamina propria, mucosa, NOS, and or confined to, but not through the muscularis mucosa involved. Note three, ignore intraluminal extension to adjacent segments of colon slash rectum or the ileum from the cecum. Note four, tumor that is inherent to other organs or structures microscopically is coded to 500, sorry, 600 or 700. Note five, invasion into pericolic, pericolorectal tissue can either be codes 300 or 400, depending on the primary site. Some sites are entirely peritonealized. Some sites are only partially peritonealized or have no peritoneum. Note six, tumors characterized by involvement of the serosal surface, visceral peritoneum, by direct extension or perforation in which the tumor cells are continuous with the serosal surface through inflammation are coded to 500. Here are notes for colon, rectum, and rectosigmoid EOD nodes coding field. Note one, code only regional nodes or nodes NOS in this field. Distant nodes are coded in EOD mess. Note two, for colon and rectum only, any unnamed nodes that are removed with a colon or rectal resection are presumed to be regional pericolic or perirectal lymph nodes and are included in the EOD regional nodes code 300. EOD METS has one note that gives a list of common distant lymph nodes specific to the colon, rectosigmoid, and rectum sites. Let's take a look at an example. 62-year-old patient noticed blood in stool for three months, progressive difficulty in evacuating bowel. Colonoscopy shows fungating lesion involving 60% of circumference of bowel transverse colon. Pre-treatment CEA 162.5, chest x-ray normal. Surgical findings of transverse colectomy shows lesion at transverse colon without evidence of gross adenopathy. Pathology report of colectomy states moderately differentiated adenocarcinoma showing transmural extension to serosa through inflammation and mets to three out of 10 regional lymph nodes. Tumor size is 4.3 centimeters. EOD case answers. Use EOD primary tumor code 500 for invasion, perforation of serosa through inflammation. Note six applies. Use EOD node code 300 due to positive regional lymph nodes involved. This would not be coded to 999, even though the lymph nodes are unnamed. Note two applies, which mentioned the unnamed lymph nodes. 
Use EOD METS code 00 for no distant METS. The chest X-ray was negative. Next, I would like to discuss the SSDI item for colon called MSI, or microsatellite instability. A change that occurs in certain cells, such as cancer cells, in which the number of repeated DNA bases in a microsatellite is different from what it was when the microsatellite was inherited. Microsatellite instability may be caused by mistakes that don't get corrected when DNA is copied in a cell. Knowing whether a cancer has microsatellite instability may help plan the best treatment. Note one, physician statement of MSI can be used to code the data item when no other information is available. Note two describes MSI as a genetic test and provides some further detail. It also says MSI is a useful prognostic marker and that the patients with high MSI colon cancer have a better response to surgery and survival. Note three, testing for MSI may be done by immunology or genetic testing. MSI is looking for instability in informative markers. Only genetic testing will specify whether the MSI is low or high. Note four, testing for mismatch repair, MMR, is usually done by immunohistochemistry. The most common markers are MLH1, MSH2, MSH6, and PMS2. Note five, if both tests are done and one or more are positive, code two. Note six, if all the tests are negative, code zero. Let's add the MSI testing to the previous case scenario, and then we'll take a poll. Immunohistochemistry testing for a mismatch repaired protein. MLH1, no immunohistochemical loss of expression. MSH2, immunohistochemical loss of expression. MSH6, no immunohistochemical loss of expression. And MSS2, immunohistochemical loss of expression. Which code would you use? Take a moment to select your answer. Thank you for taking the poll. The correct answer is code two. Use code two for this field when there is loss of expression for MSH2 and MSH PMS2. Other cases may indicate code one or two if the MSI is performed and stated to be low or high. This case scenario only had MMR IHC studies performed. The test result could also be stated MMR protein deficient, and the correct code would be two. Final thoughts. Most EOD schemas are based on primary site, although some are based on histology. TNM, TN and M information may be used to code EOD when it is the only information available in EMR. Although EOD schema site specific rules take priority over general guidelines, it is recommended to be familiar with the general guidelines. It is helpful to review the notes provided in a data item as it can contribute to selecting the correct code. This concludes the CTR coding break. Thank you for joining. We will see if anyone has any questions. Thank you, Monica, great job.
So I appreciate you doing You're that. Welcome. I am looking now to see if we have any questions. If you do have one that you have not had a chance to enter, please go ahead and just enter that in the question box and we will be glad to read that off. If you have not looked, the handouts are now available in the handout out section. So if you would like to have those, there is a PDF document that you can download for those. Monica, I don't see any questions coming in. Um, I'll give it just a few more seconds here. Just some replies saying thank you very much and you have done a great job. So I want to again just say thank you from all of us at Registry Partners for you joining today. I hope it was very informative and as promised we've only kept you about 15 minutes. Um, so we hope you all have a great rest of your day, a great weekend, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye. Bye.